I played for a short time with Georgie Graham's big band. And he was playing in New York when he heard about the International Sweethearts of Rhythm. And the manager, Mrs. Rayleigh Jones, asked if he knew of a saxophone player. And so he thought of me immediately, and he called me up. He introduced me to Mrs. Jones on the phone, and, and she did mention that it was a, a colored big band. And uh, would I have any problems? No problems. I told my mom and dad, and uh, I didn't ask them. I more or less told them. <laughs> they knew I was chomping at the bit. I just had to go back on the road. I walked in, and there was everybody in the band getting ready for the night's gig. And I was going to wear a, a skirt and a white blouse and a jacket. And there was this magnificent brass section behind me and rhythm section, and I just knew I, I was in the right place. It was a lot of fun. The fun lasted until we started doing one-nighters uh, in the South. Anna Mae mentioned something to the effect that you know, we're going to Jim Crow country. I'd been in the South with Ada Leonard. Nobody had mentioned this man's name. And of course, I had never met him. So I guess I'm going to meet him now. And then I learned that Jim Crow was a set of laws that was set up to keep black people as far removed from whites as, as humanly possible. They wouldn't stand for us mixing. I was dying to get hold of a girl one time that was a trumpet player, and she was just great. And I wanted to put her in the band, you know. And they said, we can't do it because there are a lot of people that would object to a mixed racial band. I feel so lonesome, I don't know what to do. Well, traveling through the South was something you really would like to forget. Some of the experiences you had, you know, like we'd pull into a service station and the guy would come out with his gun and say, we don't, we don't have any black toilets. You niggas go out in the field and squat. The band had its own bus, upper and lower berths like a Pullman car. And that was our home on wheels. Had a little bathroom in the back. There was a great danger for the band, for everybody in the band, for our bus driver. We all found it was much easier if I just stayed in very dangerous places in the bus. And I also remember some places they would accept it, some places didn't have room for you. you know? If we didn't sleep on the bus, we wouldn't have a place to stay. We played theaters, we played dance halls. If we were in a theater, the white folks would be downstairs and the ropes would be dividing the blacks and the whites. Everything was segregated, everything. There could be no fraternization between the races. The problems of traveling in the South were the same for male bands as they were for female bands. But the women had it a lot rougher just because they were women. There were always a group of women who would open their homes to two traveling musicians, and they were saints. There was never a question that I couldn't stay in their homes, even though it was putting them in grave danger real jeopardy. There were times on bandstands when it became pretty tricky because I was right there in the front row playing alto. There was no way to hide my face. Well, in those days, there were a lot of bedroom integration. And there were a lot of black girls that had white parents, you know what I mean? See, so there was a, yeah, I'm black. Uh, my mother's my mother's black. You want to see? They said, no, we don't want to go see your mother. We want to know, you know, what nationality you are, you know. Mrs. Jones thought that 
possibly they, the girls could come up with a way to either darken my skin or make it a, a shade that that, that uh, would be not be off-putting to sheriffs who were sniffing around trying to determine whether I was white or not. Uh, and we tried different uh, face powders and really it, it, I just turned orange for the most part. See, we had so many mixed girls in the band. The police came, you know, and he says to my, uh, my husband's manager at that time, he says, you have white girls in this band. And my husband said, well, if you can pick out the one that's white, then you arrest them. And the one that he picked out was the mulatto. You know, <laughs> he never did pick out the white ones, you know. Soon we're heading back to the Williams house for sweet potato pie. We get lots of hugs from Mrs. Williams and a bag of food for each of us. As we climb aboard the bus, she calls, Bye, children. You all take care of each other and we'll pray to the good Lord to look after you. I reach out through the open bus window, grab Mrs. Williams' hand and say, I know how much courage it took for you to take me into your home and I will never forget you. And I've not forgotten. Oops. Those were rough days. Rough times, scary times. I was surrounded by the girls with so much love, and then so many times I felt so embarrassed for my race, so humiliated by them. I wanted to lash out at them, and of course I couldn't. Well, why don't you and the girls warm up with the jam section? Okay, so it's me. Let's take it, girl. The white world was completely unaware of us. Not only we were told, but we knew that we were the best. But we couldn't get that point across because we couldn't play the places that we wanted to play. I played with the Ada Leonard band one show. And then after that, the next day, they said the studio had gotten all these calls this TV show that was doing real good, they, they had gotten calls to get the nigger off the show. But I didn't have a solo, but they didn't want me up there on the pads. That was a hurting thing. 